This is a, a global number, uh, and we did it against uh, the background of what I'm sort of known for as an economist. I, uh, I'm the creator of the famous acronym BRICS for Brazil, Russia, India, and China about how they're going to potentially be become the biggest economies in the world in 2050 along with the US. So what I thought we'd do in our initial paper, which we published in December, was look at that world and then look at another world if we have the kind of scale of problem of antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance, because it's broader than just antibiotics, right. growing and growing and growing. And the difference between the two worlds is the hundred is a hundred trillion dollars worth of global GDP. And it by 2050, we could have 10 million people a year dying uh, in various parts of the world. So particularly bad uh, for the emerging world. Two of the BRICS, China and India, could be having a million people a year dying. Here in Europe, where it's about 25,000 a year today, that could be nearly 10 times uh, bigger, something like 200,000. So it could be catastrophic. On a much smaller scale, as individuals, what we're talking about, it, it, in almost parochial terms really, is if we don't have new antibiotics, you could cut yourself shaving, yeah. pick up an infection, and there'd be nothing to treat you, and you could potentially die from that? Yeah, it's sort of, it's kind of, it's kind of weird, right? But it's yeah. sort of life as we've known it, or how we've been brought up to believe. Mm. Simple tasks that we do every day, we could end up dying if we can't, if we make a mistake and cut ourselves shaving, or... Or many, you're in the garden in and the cut garden, yourself, cut or whatever. yourself yeah. or, or going to things like a hip operation, or some kind of transplant, or as you touched on, and relevant to how pharma companies thinking, all these fancy expensive cancer treatments might not be able to be conducted. So it's a really important problem to solve.